My name is Stephen Naylor, and I'm a scientist based in HSE's Science Division and a project lead on the Lord's Register Foundation funded Discovering Safety programme. My aim with this presentation today is to provide an overview of the data innovations work stream being undertaken as part of phase two work on the Discovering Safety programme. The Data Innovations Workstream is a portfolio of small projects that look to test the feasibility of new approaches to working with routine health and safety data sets and ultimately to increase and accelerate their development. In doing so, there's a need to adopt agile ways of working when undertaking project work. And this is a theme that very much runs through the portfolio of projects being undertaken. This presentation is divided into three main parts. I'll start with a high level overview of how we see the challenge facing us and what we're looking to achieve across the various projects being undertaken on this part of the programme. I'll then offer a perspective on some of the ways in which we see health and safety as a practice changing, particularly with respect to how routine data sets are leveraged to support decision making. I'll then take a deeper dive into some of the individual project work, both completed and planned. The time series illustrated on this slide is commonly observed across many disciplines that strive to continually improve and health and safety is no exception. The last 50 years since the introduction of the Health and Safety at Work Act in the UK have seen substantial improvements in health and safety in workplaces particularly when measured in terms of the frequency of work-related fatalities. However, many industries have seen plateauing performance improvements over recent years. And I think two management adages are particularly relevant here. First, the better you become, the harder it is to improve further. And secondly, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Applied to data-driven health and safety, our view is that the easy wins have probably been made. And if we want to deliver further improvements founded on intelligent use of data, then it's a case of looking to do things a bit differently. This is very much what the data innovations work stream on the Discovering Safety Program is all about. This slide here offers a view on what this looks like at a practical level in terms of the different ways in which we might want to exploit routine health and safety data sets. For the most part, although there's obviously pockets of exceptions, the exploitation of health and safety data sets has been very much focused towards the bottom end of the pyramid in this slide. That is, data and tools for the most part tend to be used descriptively to report on past performance and in essence described what accidents happened, where they happened, when and who to. But some of the more higher value questions that are relevant to ask in the health and safety space are less directly informed by the data analyses performed. For example, why did it happen? When might it happen again? And what do we do next if it does? These higher value questions are the focus of interest for the data innovations work stream on the Discovering Safety program. But when we talk about innovating in the data science and data analytics space, what are we talking about specifically? A number of the tools and techniques that we're looking to test the feasibility of using more in health and safety contexts are illustrated on this slide here. They include things like the use of text mining and natural language processing, the use of knowledge graphs and ontologies, the use of AI and deep learning, digital technologies, like wireless sensor networks and wearable devices, uh, analysis of photo, analysis of video uh, and data sets real time, robotic process automation, for example, and cloud computing, mobile devices and other tools that support remote working and collaboration across health and safety teams. So how do we see some of these technologies changing how health and safety is practiced in the future? For some of the technologies, change is already happening at speed. While traditional health and safety, founded on HSE's HSG 65 guidance and Plan Do Check Act, the check part is built around data collection in a number of contexts. For example, the reporting of incidents, inspections and audit work, surveillance and monitoring, 
incident investigation and routine operational reporting. With the emergence of new technologies, it's these aspects of day-to-day -day health and safety management arrangements that we see changing. For example, the use of wearables, drones, wireless sensor networks and CCTV to report, inspect and monitor, mobile devices and cloud computing to be able to access performance metrics real time, and advanced analytics such as machine learning to be able to predict future performance. The ways in which the hierarchy of risk control is being implemented is also changing. The classic hierarchy of eliminate, substitute, engineer out, administrative controls and PPE, which is illustrated here, is being updated by one that's increasingly supported by technology. For example, the use of digital twins to explore ways of eliminating risk, the use of drones and cobots to remove humans from the risk loop, the use of wireless sensor networks and other technologies linked to the industrial internet of things to increase the effectiveness of engineering controls. The use of advanced knowledge management systems, common data environments, virtual reality and augmented reality to increase the effectiveness of engineering controls. And wearable technologies to enhance the use of personal protective equipment. And the practice of health and safety is looking to be far more proactive than reactive and more data driven. At a practical level, this involves having information measures of health and safety performance at your fingertips and being able to report on it real time or near time. It involves having end to end processes that start with the raw data being generated and end with it being auto collated and reported on perhaps. And perhaps having measures more directly linked to agreed actions, for example, documented risk hotspots triggering targeted inspections. There's also a desire and potential to use technology to move away from report based qualitative risk assessments to accessing digital risk advice on the fly using mobile apps. And so rather than the process of generating job method statements and risk assessments being rather detached from when jobs are actually being carried out by workers, so there's the potential to look to impart advice in a more timely manner and, and more directly influence behaviours for the better. Ultimately, there's the potential for health and safety to be personalised through the use of technologies in the same way that medicine's becoming more personalised for patients. And so rather than using a broad brush approach to mitigating risks across a, a workforce, interventions can be more tailored and targeted and hopefully more effective as a result. So how are we looking to achieve this as part of the project work being undertaken on discovering safety? Well, a key element to all the innovation work is partnership working. And some of our recently delivered partners on projects are illustrated here. They range from specialists in mainstream academia, small startups, university department spin-offs, large technical consultancies, established technology accelerators, and communities of practice that have the same aspirations to innovate in the health and safety space. I'd now like to take a deeper dive into some of the recent projects that we've completed or are underway to give you a flavour of some of the specific work and how it looks to deliver on the strategic ambitions of the workstream. One way that the Discovering Safety programme is looking to bring in specialist expertise held by small technology startups to work on innovative projects is through partnership working with the Lloyd's Register's Safety Technology Accelerator. Lloyd's Register's Safety Technology Accelerator provides a vehicle for bringing together industry and the health and safety challenges with small startups with potential solutions to help solve them. The Accelerator is all about taking solutions that have already been developed in other domains, perhaps, and looking to apply them in health and safety contexts by supporting small pilot projects designed to test feasibility. HSC ran a successful industry challenge and pilot back in 2019 and is looking to run a second later this year. The pilot undertaken in 2019 was based around the challenge of redacting sensitive content from routine health and safety data sets to ensure compliance with general data protection regulations when looking to share data sets. 
This was a big challenge for HSE at the start of the Discovering Safety program, as a lot of the core projects were based around making use of regulatory intelligence generated routinely by HSE, which often had sensitive data in it. The program ran a successful pilot with a UK company called Ohalo, which helped the program desensitize large volumes of its RIDOR accident report data automatically, so that we could share it externally with our delivery partners as part of other projects. In a new challenge and pilot project currently being planned, we're looking to bring together a range of data sets generated from HSE inspection of construction sites, including photographs taken and supporting text descriptions of breaches in legislation. At the heart of the challenge is looking to see if we can develop tools that are able to auto identify health and safety issues from photo evidence of day to day working practices on construction sites and then link them to relevant regulations, guidance and approved practice. So, for example, if we had a photograph of a worker working at height, as in the slide here, using a particular type of working at height equipment, for example, a ladder, scaffold or mobile platform, could we identify the specific equipment in the photo and any relevant guidance describing its safe use? The next case study illustrated here refers to a pilot project we undertook with an Oxford University spin-off research consultancy called Mindfoundry. The pilot project we undertook with him was with the construction firm Bam Nuttall. The aim was to see if we could take a machine learning platform developed by Mindfoundry and use it with routine health and safety project data provided by Bam Nuttall to predict the occurrence of health and safety accidents on a number of their past projects. The whole philosophy behind Mindfoundry's machine learning platform was to support data rich organisations that wanted to start making use of these advanced analytic tools and techniques, but didn't have the expertise necessarily in house to develop the models themselves and, and use them independently. Discovering safety got to see whether this thinking could be applied to health and safety specifically. We carried out a similar pilot study with a tech firm called Polecat. This time the focus of the work was a tool that the tech firm had developed called RepVault that allowed organisations to carry out targeted searching of the internet. We tested the feasibility of creating a search tool that was able to create a global picture of health and safety risks intelligence. For example, major accidents that recently happened across the globe, new emerging risks in different countries and regimes, new regulations or new ways of using technology to manage risks. A key part of the work was looking to create a way of visualising and summarising such intelligence. Ultimately, the longer term ambition of this part of the programme is to identify solutions that have the potential to be of value for the global health and safety community and then work together with industry partners to realise such potential and then make the solutions available for the wider global community to benefit from. If you'd like any further information on any of the projects mentioned today, you can follow progress through the usual social media channels and visit the programme website illustrated on this slide. Thanks for listening.